Alex Honnold is the living definition of defying the odds and living beyond limits. He doesn't let minor details like, let's say, gravity get in the way of his pursuit of the next extreme adventure. I suppose the defining thing about free soloing is that it's just so much higher consequence than other climbing because you have no rope, you have no backup, you have no protection. If you fell anywhere past the middle of the route, you'd bounce all the way down to the valley floor. Part of the appeal in soloing big walls to me is to be in this cool position where there's a lot of air around you and to be in this amazing place that hardly anybody gets to go. In case you missed it, in that clip, Alex takes on many of his adventures as a free solo climber. That means he doesn't use ropes or other support gear. Alex Honnold is one of the most recognized and followed extreme adventure climbers in the world. He holds several speed records and is the only known free solo climber of the Yosemite Triple Crown, a task he accomplished in 18 hours and 50 minutes. And when he's not defying gravity and record-setting time, he's devoted to the work of his foundation. His nonprofit organization has a simple motto, do more, better. The Alex Honnold Foundation supports various innovative projects. They offer simple, sustainable, and environmentally responsible solutions for improving lives around the world. Alex, welcome to Full Frame. Uh, let me ask you about this. Uh, I had Tony Hawk on this broadcast, and I said, uh, you know, if, if you had a dictionary, have you ever looked up the word terror? Because it doesn't seem like you know the definition. But you kind of take it even, even to a higher extreme. Uh, is there any moment in time when you're up there where, oh my God, this is terrifying, what am I thinking? Uh, no, basically no. <laughs> but I mean, the whole reason I'm up there is because I love the position, I like being in that situation, I, you know, I, I like being in those places. You know, it's not like anybody requires me to go there, so. But, um. but you must get a lot of people thinking, oh my God, you're crazy. But you, to you, it's no big deal, I guess. Well, for me, I, I just don't think it's any different than like a race car driver driving super fast, you know, close to the, the edge of the track and things like that, like, which to me would be terrifying. But, but to somebody who's spent their whole life racing cars, I'm sure is totally casual. What's the appeal? What's the thrill for you? Uh, where's the excitement? I mean, for me, well, I guess there are two things. So I just love climbing. I love the movement of climbing, swinging around on holds and just like ascending a cool face. But then um, I also love the position, like being outside, being in, you know, I mean, Yosemite is one of the most beautiful places in the whole world. And just to be able to experience it in that really rich way, like to have a good adventure in that beautiful place, I mean, it's, you know, it's very satisfying. So uh, ascending is, is probably exciting for you, but is it getting up at the top and knowing that you're one of a few people that have actually done this and looking around at these majestic mm -hmm. sites? I mean, is, is that the payoff? Uh, I mean, you know, there's a little bit to that, but honestly, it's just the actual act of going climbing all the time is the payoff. And just the whole, the whole life around climbing all the time, like being in these beautiful places with your friends and climbing. So I mean, you're you're highlighting all the soloing, obviously, because that's like the most exciting thing to watch. But um, you know, my big solos are maybe a couple days a year, and the whole rest of the year I'm climbing with friends, climbing with my normal partners, just going out and doing normal rock climbing, and it's you know it's super fun. But most kids grow up, you know, they want to be the astronaut or they want to be the president of the United States. Most people don't. Yeah, I, at least I don't think they think at you know age eight or nine or ten or eleven or twelve. This is what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. So when did you have that epiphany where well, I don't, I'm really good at this and maybe I can make a living doing this? Actually, I, I never had that epiphany. I never like thought that I was going to be a climber. But um, I dropped out of uh, UC Berkeley when I was 19. Well, I, I went for a year to university and then I just didn't really love it and was like, oh, the only thing I really want to be doing all the time is going climbing. And I was like, I'll just go climb for a semester. And then I just kept climbing and just never looked back. Ever have those moments where the parents pull you aside and, Alex, we want to have a heart-to-heart -heart with you because they're, they just got, or are they okay with this? No, they're, uh, they're okay with it. I mean, my family's always been very supportive and just sort of, I mean, I'm doing the thing that I love doing the most in the world, and, and it's all kind of worked out well for me. And Yeah, my family's 
pretty psyched on that, I think. And you've traveled the world. Um, do you think that gives you a better viewpoint? I mean, what's interesting is you have your foundation, hmm. and having traveled around the world, you, you probably see a lot of different things. Is that kind of sparked what your interests are in terms of the foundation? Yeah, definitely the travel is sort of what informed any nonprofit work and like um, a few like noteworthy expeditions I did um, specifically to Chad in the center of Africa in uh, I think it was 2010. That was sort of my first encounter with like full third world conditions and um, you know it was like a big a, yeah it was a big experience for me to go there. And, um, and then having more trips like that since then, you know, it's just sort of encouraged me to try to like give back in some way. Or and so what did you decide to do? I mean, t talk to us about the specifics of the foundation. I mean, wh what are you focused on, would you say? Is it, so currently the foundation has just been, it's just been my way of donating my money to, uh, to clean energy projects, basically, to any kind of environmental project that also improves standard of living. So like um, we've been supporting solar light projects in Africa where, um, you know, I mean, it, helps like lift people out of poverty by giving them access to light which improves education improves health all those kinds of things but then it also improves the environment by not burning kerosene um, you know replacing the lights that they would be using things like that um, this last year I also supported a project on the Navajo reservation in northern Arizona um, which was sort of my first attempt at merging like a climbing trip with a with nonprofit work because a partner and I did like a three-week bike tour through the desert climbing a bunch of different you know, uh, desert spires and then culminating on the Navajo Reservation, which is like known for super impressive desert towers. And then, you know, we did some work with them trying to help out. But you know, there, you know, and I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I mean, I could start a foundation where I'm, I'm trying to help a guy living in his car and that would be you. I mean, you, you know what I mean? There's like people who would look at your life and say, oh my God, we got to help this guy. But tell, tell everybody how you live. I mean, you live in your van. Yeah, I live in my van, but I live in my van by choice because I, because I choose to be able to drive to different climbing areas all the time. And I mean, living in a van is a lot more comfortable than living in a tent, and that's what I'd be living in otherwise. Well, but. here's what's interesting. I was uh, talking to some colleagues here today, and I was telling them mm -hmm. about the free soloing, and they're like, oh my God, that, that guy, he's amazing. And then I told them that you live in your van, and they were like, oh, that's terrible. It, it seems so funny, because well, possessions are so important to people, <laughs> and yet they, they don't seem to hold much weight for you. Yeah, yeah it doesn't really. I'm, not interested. <laughs> but I mean, the thing is, I'm really interested in going climbing all the time, and living in a van facilitates that. Yeah. So, you know, that's fine with me. So it works with, for you. Yeah, totally. The thing is, though, that most people ask me, they have the impression, uh, they're like, you know, so when's your next climb? Or like, you know, have you been climbing? And I'm like, I go climbing probably six days a week, you know? I rest when I have to, but I basically climb every day because I love going climbing. And so, um, you know, it's not like I like live in a nice home and then you know, train and then go do certain climbs, you know, once a season or something. It's like, no, I'm climbing every day. And so I have to be like in the places that I like to climb. Okay, so what excites you and what scares you? Within climbing? Yeah. I don't know, I mean, when I see like a big, beautiful, clean wall, like El Capitan in Yosemite, which yeah. is basically the best big wall in the world, um, that's exciting. I look at that and I'm like, that is just such a big, beautiful face. I just, I don't know, I get all fired up. Uh, but, well. In terms of what scares you, I, I mean, I'll, I'll make a confession here. I was watching some of the, the videos of you, and it's fantastic. They show you, and you're climbing and stuff, and the camera swoops around and goes above you, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to throw up. I mean, I, I could never, I have a height thing. I mean, if I were to look down at some of the spots where you are, it's curtains for me. I mean, <laughs> does, it, does any of that get to you? Or? Well, a lot of people say they have a height thing, but, but I think... A lot of people mean they have like a danger thing. You know, they're afraid of falling off the mountain and they're afraid of falling off of things. They're afraid of danger. And I mean, I'm afraid of danger too. Like if I think I'm about to die, then, you know, I feel fear the same as anybody else. But, you know, I don't feel that I'm in danger in those situations because, you know, I'm prepared for the routes. I've trained for them. You know, they're, I, can, I can do them. So I feel comfortable. Um, uh, any moments that stand out uh, since you've been doing this where you, you know, got to a point and you're like, maybe this wasn't a good idea? I mean, actually, my my closest calls, whatever, have all been with a rope on, with partners, but um, in places where I just couldn't find protection, you know, for like placing gear into the mountain or whatever. So you're climbing with a rope and you feel like you should be safe, but then pretty soon you're like 50 feet above your last piece of gear, and so you're looking at potentially taking a 100-foot fall, and so that's not really that safe anymore, and you're like, oh, man. So I've had a few few experiences like that, but, um, but for the most part, when I'm soloing, I'm doing things that, that I feel comfortable on and that I'm prepared for and whatever. So, no, you know, I try to minimize close calls like that. 
So if you have right. kids and they come and say, Dad, I want to do what you did, you'd be like, okay with it. Well, I'd be like, you better train your balls off and like get really fit. You know, but yeah, I mean, if they put in the time and they feel prepared for it. The thing with soloing is that I think it's um, sort of self-selecting. Like, if somebody wants to go soloing, like, anybody can try it. And once they're 20 feet off the ground, they'll sort of have their own moment where they're like, do I really want to be doing this? Am I actually, you know, am I motivated for the right reasons? Like, do I want this? Because, it, you know, it's quite scary if you're not ready for it. Right. And so, you know, I think people can sort of figure it out for themselves. Yeah. It wouldn't take me 20. But thanks so much, yeah. uh, Alex. It was, it was a delight. Really appreciate it. Cool. Thanks. Come